so the, the, the next talk is, is Johan Eckel, Two Color SLR at WLRS, Scope and Limitations. So thanks, Matt, for the introduction. As already mentioned, my talk will be about two color SLR at the at Vetzel, actually. And uh, I wanted to stress out uh, what we can do and what we cannot do. And so this is more a technical report. And yeah, I will have some, some uh, slides about the performance in both wavelengths. So uh, yeah, I wanted to start with the tran transmitter. And this is a picture of our laser room. You can see at the bottom left here, maybe, or not, this one. You can see our seed laser, which is a high Q laser, which is well known in the community. It delivers one millijoule pulses at 1064 nanometer with a repetition rate of up to 500 hertz. And these pulses are either fed, uh, sent to the post amplifier, which can be seen in here. Uh, this is used for lunar laser ranging. And this works only uh, at a repetition rate of 20 hertz, but with much higher uh, pulse energy. Or it can be guided uh, to this bypass uh, here, which is at the moment illuminated. And uh, there you have a few uh, yeah, quite important components there. You have this seven times beam expander, which reduces actually the, uh, the, the the power density of the laser, and this uh, uh, then uh, the pulse is fed to the uh, second harmonic generation crystal, which is a non-critical phase matched LBO crystal. And uh, yeah, actually there we have a quite large uh, beam diameter, and so the efficiency is maybe not not uh, there where it could be. And uh, uh, the third important component is the gradient uh, neutral density filter wheel, uh, which is used to attenuate the, the receive signal to the single photon level. So we cannot adjust uh, the signal levels, uh, the sig signal levels of both channels independently. We uh, adjust it at the at the transmitter. Yeah. So we have three operating modes, which is SLR, two color SLR, and LLR with different parameters. Uh, we have a conversion efficiency, as already mentioned, which is quite low at 25%. So we have, uh, in two color mode, we have 0 0.9 uh, millijoule at 1064 and 0 0.3 at 532. Uh, we switch between SLR and two color SLR uh, by temperature detuning of the second harmonic crystal, which can be seen here is, is the uh, second harmonic generation efficiency. So by detuning it uh, a few degrees, uh, the, the, the efficiency is almost gone, and we almost uh, just transmit uh, the infrared light. So as already mentioned, we use a non-critical phase match crystal, so we have no spatial walk-off. So the pointing at the telescope output is uh, between both beams, let's say the 1064 beam and the 532 beam, uh, the pointing offset is below 1.5 arc seconds, which is acceptable because we use a divergence usually, which is of the order of three to four arc seconds. Yeah, and uh, all these things together, uh, we have one problem. So we lose quite a lot of energy in the near infrared regime when we do uh, two color ranging. So to avoid these losses for, uh, for uh, navigation satellites or satellites which are quite far away, uh, we switch to normal SLR and we use two color SLR just uh, up to an orbital height of Lagios. And yeah, this is the receiver side here. We use two spots, an SAP 300 from laser components in the green and uh, the well-known PGA 200 1064 from now RMI Electronics, former Princeton Lightwave, in the near infrared. Uh, we use, for both detectors, we use quite high uh, bias voltages above breakdown. You should not do that because this is well above the specification of the manufacturer, actually. But we developed uh, custom uh, quenching circuits, and with that, you can do it. At least we do it now for several years, so it's not a big problem. Um, the SAP 300 is cooled down to minus 15 degrees, the, the PGA to minus 50. 
the timing is similar of both detectors. It's about 3.6 millimeters RMS or uh, 24 picoseconds actually. It's missing here. Okay, and uh, the quantum efficiency in the green channel is slightly higher. Uh, yeah, it's 85% compared to 75 in near infrared. But, and, and also the dark noise is, is very much lower in, at, uh, at 532. So here in the middle, this is uh, also a bit important, let's say. This is the timing this, uh, or the histogram uh, of the range measurement to a local target. So this is the, the noise of the detector, uh, the timing jitter. And uh, the purple line here is the near infrared channel. So this is well Gaussian distributed. And the green one here is the, the, yeah, the green detector. And you can see here a diffusion tail. Up to now, we are not really sure if this is a diode property or if it is uh, an optical signal. But I will come back to that later. So for now, uh, here is a, a summary con concerning the link budget in both channels. We, we lose 25% uh, or we have then 33% of the uh, light <laughs> Uh, energy of the near infrared in green, so we have here a factor of 0.33. We have, we lose quite a few photons because of the wavelengths, so we have 50% efficiency compared to the near infrared channel in green, uh, caused by the number of photons. From the quantum efficiency, there's a slight advantage uh, for the green channel. We do not really know what the atmosphere does, so it's about 80% worse in uh, less energy in, uh, in green. And from the satellite, we expect, because of the far-field diffraction pattern, uh, that the, the infrared wavelength performs uh, uh, quite a bit worse. So combining all these together, we should, should reach something like 67% here uh, efficiency in green compared to the near infrared. And yeah. We'll come back to that later on. For now, there's a short, uh, a short summary of what, what we do. So two-color laser ranging is operational in Wetzel since early August this year. We do it up to late Earth orbit. Up to now, we have collected uh, more than 3,500 normal points. Uh, the focus is on the, on the near-infrared channel. So accurate control works based on that channel. Telescope pointing works based on that channel. We have a fully automated operation. So this means we have reprodu reproducible algorithms. Uh, also the, the, the echo extraction from the satellite or from, from the noise is completely automated. Also the normal, joint, normal point generation, uh, and this actually can be seen here on the right side. So the system is, is working, it's measuring satellites and satellites, and from time to time such a plot pops out of the system. And yeah, here you can see the flatted residuals in purple, you can see the normal points, and you can see also these green bars here, which indicate uh, the accurate in this channel it, it, uh, for that plot it was the, the green channel. You can see the the echo rate here in one second intervals, so whenever the echo rate is above 10, 10%, which is indicated by the black line here, the signal is, is, is deleted. So we do not use signal which is above 10%. Yeah, uh, so we have no human interaction, continuing here. Uh, and yeah, as already mentioned, we, we expect that the relative detection efficiency in both channels should be around uh, 67%. And here is actually what we, what we measured. So most of the satellites are, are quite close to this 67% relative detection efficiency between the green and the near infrared channel. But uh, for LHS2 actually and LARES, we have uh, observed uh, something pretty different. Uh, green seems to perform pretty well, uh, pretty bad for, for both of these satellites. Uh, on the other hand side, uh, Achisai seems to be quite good in green. So, yeah, it's a bit strange, but that's what we have seen. Um, I would, actually, I wanted to compare the lab measurements to do these measurements, these are just satellites, but it's quite difficult in the lab to, 
to make these measurements because of diffraction patterns and, and uh, the filter transmission and so on. So here are the absolute values actually uh, of the accurates in both channels. Um, we could see that this Lagos 1 performs pretty similar to Laris 2 here. And uh, we could see that uh, both Lagos performs quite different. So it seems that Lagos 2 performs quite well in near infrared and uh, pretty similar in, in green. And uh, yeah, just for completeness, here is also Laris, but it's a, a pretty different orbital height. And anyway, you have, often have to attenuate, so there's, yeah, it's a bit unclear here. Okay, so the next slide here is, is the, the RMS that we observed uh, in both channels. Uh, so here you can see the, uh, the calibration, the system calibration, which is the, uh, yeah, actually the, the timing performance of the detectors. And you can see that here the green is slightly worse, and this is most probably to, due to the diffusion tail that we have seen in the previous slides. So, but when we, when we take a look at the satellite performance, we can see a quite different behavior. Here the green channel is most of the time is, is much better. Well, not much better, but it is better. And so we, we suppose that this, this uh, slightly worse performance here in, in the calibrations is due to uh, optical misalignment or something like that. But we have to go into that in more detail in the future. Uh, one strange thing here is that Lagos 1 seems to have higher RMS jitter uh, compared to all of the other satellites in, in green. So this is a bit strange, but I have no explanation. Just for completeness, here's the same plot, but for a few uh, LEO satellites, you can see here this is basically the same, uh, yeah, the same performance in both detection channels. So the, the, the green channel, in, in principle, uh, most, uh, almost always performs better, except for Lacia's one. Yeah, and this brings me to the, the, the last segment, let's say, of my presentation. So, if you want to, to make real uh, two-color measurement and you want to extract the, the, atmos the absolute atmospheric delay out of that, this, this is quite demanding, let's say, because you have, you have this scale factor here, uh, which is about a factor of 20 and, and uh, is calculated from the disperse, dispersive terms of uh, both wavelengths. So, uh, if you want to end up with, a, with an accuracy of your absolute atmospheric delay of one millimeter, you have to measure the relative delay between both detection channels at the level of 0.3 picoseconds. So this is yeah, very, very demanding. So this is the first point I wanted to stress out here. And the second one is that uh, for us, it was most, for a pre-evaluation, it was most straightforward to simply use uh, single differences. Uh, we make simultaneous me measurements in, in green and infrared. So we can, we can pick this, these points out, which were detected on both detection channels simultaneously. And then the, the residual uh, calculation is pretty simple. So we have the time of light of the near infrared channel minus time of light of the green channel, and we subtract uh, from that the model. And so we can verify the model in principle. So uh, I will continue with the first point here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so, as already mentioned, it's quite demanding to make these uh, two-color measurements because you need to be very accurate, actually. And, and uh, concerning that, I wanted to stress out here the calibration uh, of our system. So, this is the calibration mean values uh, for the last, uh, or since we did uh, two-color measurements, so since early August. And you can see a variation in the mean value here, which is at the, of the order of, of one millimeter. And this is the, the green channel here. It's just basically the same. And if you subtract both, you should end up at a stability between both channels, which is well below one millimeter. So this is one thing. And here uh, there is a plot of the residuals when using the, the single differences. Um, you can see here these blue dots are from so-called uh, zero-signature satellites. Actually, it's a champ from champ-like 
uh, or, or this from satellites with, with champ-like arrays. So uh, here the, uh, the distribution is quite flat with, with elevation, so this is rising elevation here. Uh, for Lagios, the situation becomes much more difficult, the green dots here, and it's the, the, the jitter is higher, and also there seems to be some slight trend here. So I'm not sure if we will not, or we cannot use the data for such things. You need a more sophisticated method, but not single differences. And for Archisai, the purple uh, points here in the back, I would say, uh, yeah, for us, is no, no chance to make something. Um, yeah, here's the scale, which is 200 picoseconds. As I already mentioned, we should end up here at, at 0.3 picoseconds. So there's a lot of averaging necessary. And yeah, this is already the conclusion. Uh, we make two color ranging at uh, WRS uh, up to latest orbit since early August now. We have to focus on the 1064 channel. I did not mention this in the presentation. We have the possibility to operate the system in iSafe mode at, at 1064 nanometers, which is not possible for green. So we have to make some compromise here. We will see how we uh, treat this. <clears throat> uh, we basically, we had no, no discrepancy in the, in the relative detection rates except for, for a few satellites. Uh, the internal quality check is not passed yet. We have to find the reason for this diffusion tail of the green detector. And yeah, I have put here some questions. I think the first one is, is a miracle for quite a time. Uh, what is the difference between uh, Lagos 1 and Lagos 2? And my last question, what shall we do with the data? And with that, uh, I want to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. So we have uh, one opportunity to ask a quick questions. Thanks a lot for the nice presentation. Um, I would like to know actually what the, how did you do the alignment between the, the two beams, the infrared and the green one? Uh, we do not align them separately. The, the, the pointing offset between both is 1.5 arc seconds, so this is reasonable for, that, for what we want to do. Uh, so there's no need for it actually. Okay, thanks.